1889 McIntyre Villa, built in 1889 for John McIntyre and his first wife. She only lived here about a year and a half, maybe a little less than that. Um, the house took a year to build, $14,000, um, all original, well, except for the kitchen, um, all original um, woodwork, five fireplaces. Um, the kitchen that you're standing in right now, this used to be the mudroom. Okay. And the concrete slab out in the back, I don't know if you saw that, it's a pergola. Um, they would bring the horses up and then let the ladies out to walk through the mudder. The garage used to be a two-story carriage house where the servants stayed. They would walk around the side and the very end, I'll show you, there's a room off the kitchen, which used to be the kitchen. And so they would walk in that way and then down the hallway and serve food. So I will take you through. And this is the dining room. It's in five fireplaces, all original. Um, after John McIntyre built the house with his first wife, and she passed away, he remarried. Let's see, she passed away in 1891. In 1895, he remarried Anna. She lived here with him and her three sons from her previous marriage. So the four, five of them lived here. Um, Mr. McIntyre passed away in 1901. I have two different dates. One is 1901 and one is 1902. Not sure which one it was. Um, he passed away after he died in the home. Anna's brother Charles, which was a pro he was a prominent judge in Atchison, and his wife lived here with Anna and her three sons. 1916, Anna passed away. 1922, her son committed suicide, suicide on the second floor. We don't know which room. He shot himself in, it says, the bullet lodged in the left side of his brain. He was alive for two hours. He was in the dining room. He said he had a headache. Took some headache medicine, went upstairs, five minutes later they heard a shot, and he was, like I said, he was alive for two hours, um, but then passed away. We don't know which room. How old was he? He was 34. Okay. It was October the 10th, 1922. And then in 1924, Charles the Judge and his wife moved to the other side of town in Atchison, um, off of Laramie Street. The house in 1924 became a boarding home for 25 years, and we don't have any history of the boarding house times. Um, so a lot of people coming and going, a lot of different owners. We did see different owners through the courthouse. Um, we checked out the deeds. 1952, Goldie, which is, her name is Isabel Altis, nicknamed Goldie. She bought the house in 1952 and lived here until 1969 when she passed away. She lived here like I said, all by herself. She was very eccentric. She sold the house to Mr. and Mrs. Girardi in 1969. She went up to him and she asked, she asked Mr. Girardi if he was interested in buying the home. She couldn't keep up with it. Um, she was in her 70s, and he, she had no place to go. So they let her stay here while they did their renovations. They didn't live here. She lived here still while, by herself while they were renovating. Um, she didn't drive. One evening, she had a driver take her to dinner. Um, so one evening, she did not go out to dinner, and he didn't think twice about it. The next night, she didn't go out to dinner. He called the police. The police called Mr. Girardi, and they came in and found her passed away in her rocking chair, which is still in this room. Um, Hand on a pistol. They said she was dead for about 24 hours when they found her. So, after that, Mr. and Mrs. Girardi moved in in 69. They both passed away in the home. And they both passed away in the room, the very last room I'll show you, which used to be the kitchen. We know of eight deaths in the home, one of them being a suicide. This is Goldie's parlor because Goldie passed away in here. This is the actual rocking chair she died in. She was right here by the fireplace looking out the windows. Mr. McIntyre was a harness and saddle maker when he was in Atchison. He was very well liked. He was very wealthy, um, prominent, and he was big in real estate. Um, he had a building off of 7th or 8th and Commercial. It was McIntyre Hall. It was one of the largest banquet halls in Kansas. It held over 2,000 people. I do know that when he built his house, the rich folks in town didn't want him building on their side of town because he's from Ireland. So he built his home on the, on the hill and back then stained glass was very expensive so most people would have either just on the front of the house or maybe just a window. He has it all over and okay, this used to be the main entrance and there's a wraparound porch. I have a picture of it upstairs. We don't know what happened to it. We've heard that it burned but I don't have any record. Mm -hmm. I just know that there's no porch. <laughs> So we do have a picture. We're hoping to recreate it, um, hopefully sometime soon. Yeah. So they would enter in this way. I'm assuming that's why there's a fireplace here. Um, lots of activity we've heard under the stairs. Um, maybe kids playing hide and seek. We've heard there are a lot of children in this This house. used to be the kitchen. 
right here used to be the stove. Mm -hmm. um, or, yeah, the stove. They'd walk around and they would enter this door and they would cook and then they would go through like a hallway because obviously that one's not there. Then they would serve dinner in the dining room. Lots of times we hear, I mean, loud. Sounds like somebody picks up the bed in the kids' room because that's what's right above us and just drops it. And it's like, mm. boom! Or we hear just like three knocks and it sounds like someone's just at the door. Two sets of stairs, the servant's stairs and then the main staircase. This gets a lot of activity. It's, we hear lots of, you hear lots of footsteps. I heard some on Wednesday where my friend and I were sitting in the middle and she was commenting on she likes the chairs. And right then you hear somebody walking down the stairs and she just darted. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of, it's subtle things like that. It's not like in your face kind of, yeah. mm -hmm. but it's, you know, you hear footsteps, knockings, um, voices, um, but nothing like evil, creepy. Yeah. This is the door that opens on its own. It hasn't in a while. We keep it shut just in case it does open. When you do, when it does open, you hear like click, click and Sometimes it opens this much, sometimes it opens all the way. Sometimes it opens a lot, and then sometimes mm -hmm. it months go by. This room here, we call Lucy's Parlor. And the reason we call it Lucy's Parlor is because our dog's name is Lucy. So this is the wraparound porch that um, burned down, or I guess supposedly burned down. We don't know what happened to it. Um, we think that the lady in that picture is the second Mrs. McIntyre because of the time frame of the, mm -hmm. on sure. the, of the picture. And her mother passed away here also, so we think maybe one could be her mother. One, I mean, I'm assuming this is an older version. I don't know. Mm -hmm. We have no clue. And this is just in one of the articles of Goldie, who passed away in the rocking chair downstairs. And the carriage house. This is this uh, two-story carriage house where the servants lived. Before it now just looks like an icky garage. <laughs> We've had a shadow person. My friend and I were sitting on this chair, and we had the grid pen all along here. You see somebody stand up right here and walk that way and then walk this way and then kind of waver back and forth and then walk and go down. We had our little, I had my little dog with me and she was watching the whole time. So this is the library. We call this the Conlon Library because um, Judge Conlon, we just assume he might have been in one of these rooms. We think this might have been the master area. So this room here, we've also gotten on an EVP, um, I'm Never Leaving, and it's a very gruff voice, kind of just very stern. Mm -hmm. um, hallway, lots of footsteps. Um, you hear shuffling, you hear, I mean, maybe like kids coming up and down or a ball bouncing. This room is the kids' room. We don't sit in here, otherwise we would be creepy people, but. Uh, oh, I don't like that, I don't like that thing oh, right there. She's creepy. Yes, <laughs> my husband doesn't either. I love her. Ones, they uh, are creepy, but no. not as like because it's in a case i think that's why it kind of reminds haunted. me yep. that uh that one doll that they locked up annabelle An <laughs> yes 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 this is our annabelle i call her esmeralda <laughs> um somebody said that they got her name on a ghost box oh really but they won't say it because they didn't want it to come to life i guess um people have seen it move um i was here with a friend wednesday and we were sitting here and my friend hates this doll she's the one that told me about the doll and so we drove four hours to Fayetteville, Arkansas to get her. I'm like, you, it's your fault we have her. <laughs> but we were, her mouth was open. And like two hours later, it was completely closed. So, and we don't move her. Um, I mean, she's locked in. She is from the 1800s. She has real human hair. And they say from a kid. Um, but yeah, she's creepy. So um, she's pretty new. She's only been here a couple of months. And since we have gotten her, we have had lots of activity. Um, that's when the cat balls started lighting up. Um, mm -hmm. I had a friend in here. We were in here, and Jeff and his friend went to get his pizza. We thought they were back. We walked down the hallway. We heard Jeff. We thought it was Jeff. It was a guy's voice, just, we're here. And it was in the middle landing of the main staircase. And so like, okay. We walked downstairs, and they weren't here. And I'm like, you did hear that, right? And she was, yeah. And so we got on the cameras. All four floors picked up the voice. <laughs> okay, the attic um, said, there's, I don't really feel kind of, Creep down the attic, some people do. Um, the second floor to me is where I think most of it's at. <laughs> when we first moved in, a lot of, not just activity, but scary. Like, it sounded like well, we doors slamming. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you get used to doors? I mean, it was loud, like slamming. Yeah. And then um, the door handle jiggling and like scratching on the door. People tell us that somebody hung themselves in the yeah. tower. Two mediums. Um, yeah. And they also said that they believe that they actually didn't hang themselves, they, they were killed and then hung to look like they killed themselves oh. we don't have documentation so i don't know if yeah. it's true or not um but i will say that the most activity we have heard and other people have gotten is in this area there, it sounds kind of rustling around like just 
yeah, something like that. It's, there's I, something, I something in this. In the you will hear it, like just walking around or rustling. We heard um, a lady, the whisper, but it was very loud. It was like, I'm here. Like, I'm here. And like, it was very yeah, strange. The, the energy entity is here. It's not like an evil feeling, you know. Yeah. It's more of a. It's, it's well, uncomfortable when it. When, sometimes. Yeah. You always feel like you're being watched. Uh, you always feel like, um, you know, making you second guess yourself. You know, you put something down and it'll end up in a room that you know for, almost for a fact you, that you weren't in that room. We've seen a box move like when we first moved in because we had a pile of boxes. We were mm -hmm. unpacking stuff and, and it just went shh. And so yeah. he goes, okay, Goldie, I'll clean, I'll clean up. Yeah, I told yes, Goldie all like weekend that. that I was like, I'll clean all this stuff up. She was really particular about people leaving messes around and things like that. And, uh, and so, yeah, we were sitting there talking mm -hmm. and, the, and the box just, just shifted. Yeah. And I was like, oh. like I said, he's not a ghost person, so when it yeah. happens, he's like, "Did you know this was haunted when you yeah, bought, it? Okay. bought it?" Okay, yep. okay, so you had, you already knew. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we knew, yeah. yeah okay. the only reason. I took your Christmas ornaments down in February, and they were on the mantles, and I just felt like he was at home, so I'm by myself, and I'm like, I just felt like someone's like in my space the whole time, and it wasn't. It actually was so uncomfortable. I go, "Leave me alone." Yeah, I mean, and I felt weird saying it, but I've never felt so uneasy. Yeah, I was working on that chandelier mm -hmm. in the main area, mm -hmm. and it, it's, it was the first time I ever heard voices. I heard, I heard a lady's voice uh, essentially compliment. She said, like, you know, that looks nice or very nice job or something like that. And uh, but I heard it distinctly, and you know, I've never heard voices. Wow. Uh, lady's perfume. It was like it got sprayed We've right in my that. face. We've heard that. We smelled that. And it was a powder thing. perfume. I, and I know every smell in this house. And I had, I had never. Every once in a while, you will smell cigarette smoke. Yeah, but this was like it, distinct right in my face. It's like it, really like an old lady powdery. Yeah. All right, basements, which is completely opposite from the attic. <laughs> now I will say I don't know if it's true or not, but we have heard that there was a doctor. This was from a quite a few mediums. There was a doctor that did illegal abortions or something illegal to women, to children, the babies. So this room here, I actually I do find kind of creepy. Um, I've heard a lady's voice moaning very loud, very clear, three times. It's, there's something, this is the room that creeps me out a little bit. It's going off. Is someone down there? It's going crazy, Jill. Hello. Did you have a um, spirit box? They do. It's right there. Is somebody touching the top of my head right now? We don't mind if you do that as long as you're nice. Is someone around me? I feel like somebody was touching the top of my head. Getting... During the spirit box session here. Oh. Well, let's move over to this room and talk. Hi, any kids in here? What's your guys' <clears throat> favorite song? I bet you I know, Jill. It's Ring Around the Rosie. No, that's a sad song. I know, but they always sang it. About. Mary had a little lamp. There we go. You guys know that one? All right, we better go to the attic and turn it on to night vision. Investigate up there. Okay. Anybody up here in the attic? How about does anybody hang out up here? <laughs> yeah. Besides birds. Just touch this thing here. See, look at that.
But let's check out back here because this is where they said that kid was. Yep. Hello. This is where that person said they had a little kid in here. Did you have your favorite spot underneath the stairs? Nobody could find you? Can you say something? I feel like it's getting cold around my legs. Are you here? Can you move something in the corner over there? Or knock on something so we know you're in here with us? If you do that for me, I'll, get, I'll read you a story. It's yeah. probably been a long time since you had somebody read you a story. It blinked. There we go. Oh, thank you. Are you here? All right. Well, I promised you a book. So I'll go get that. I'll be right back. I'll stay here. I'll just pick one. Was that you? Was that you laughing? Were you giggling? I think I heard a little girl laughing or really? giggling. Yeah. I'll read you another one, but yeah. Oh, it well, blinked again. Another one? Is this a little boy here? Is there a little boy? I thought someone thought it was a girl, but we don't know. So if you're if you're a little girl, can you touch that? I like seeing the green light. Oh, thank oh, you. There. So it must be a little girl. I got chalk. Oh, yeah, that's cool. You want a piece of chalk? I'll give you a gift. You just got to tell me what you want. Does that mean you want the chalk? Make it go higher if you want the yeah, chalk. You can just touch it really hard if you want the chalk. One more time, just give it more than one light and we'll give you chalk. If it's yes to the chalk, just touch it. I want to give you the right gift so you're happy. Chalk? Yes? Okay. I'll bring you a piece of chalk. I have pink, I think. You like pink? Yes? Okay. I will look for a pink piece of chalk. Well, my feet are getting really cold. <laughs> Can you feel that? Can you mm -mm. feel any coldness? There's a very cold on my feet right now. Mm -mm. So, pink chalk it is. Yay! Pink chalk, pink chalk. And pink I bet you you can draw pretty things with pink chalk. You know what? Mm -hmm. I have complete goosebumps and my legs are getting ice cold and colder. Are you standing over by Jill? Which I really appreciate. That's really cool. Yeah. If you could draw me a picture right here. Like a picture of anything. Yeah, there's a, a flower. Oh, that'd be pretty. Or a kitty. Oh, a kitty. I love kitties. Kitties are my favorite. You like kitties too? You know, I have three kitties. How about your name? Can you whisper your name? For some reason, Melinda came to mind, but I don't know if I'm just making that up. If we, um, so, oh, you like Melinda? Are you wearing a dress right now? You have long hair. Yeah. She reminds me of a petite. Did it go off? Mm -mm. A petite little girl, very small. I just very pictured, timid. I just picture. Uh, uh, I don't know why Melinda came to mind, but I just picture her with long blonde hair. I heard something out there. I did too. I thought maybe that was your. Mm -mm. All right. Thank you. Love you. Have a good night. Oh, I said I love you, but... It's <laughs> alright. They're following you around, so what the heck. Let's just do it room by room. So we'll start in there. Okay. And then make our way around. Hello? Kind of smells smoky maybe over here a little bit. Behind me. There's somebody down in this room. Can you come say hello? You can touch this thing in my hand. It won't hurt you. 
That's kind of what I, I'm smelling. I'm smelling like a, if this was. I can't hear. I thought I heard somebody walking around upstairs. Oh, I thought I heard like a boom, boom. Like a two. Just like that. It was faint though. Well, if you said anything, thanks for sharing. I really appreciate that. You want to come talk to us in another way? What kind of animals did you have? strongly at the bottom of the stairwell. I mean literally I just got, well I got goosebumps all the way up and down now since I stopped there to smell the lilac. Very strong. Cool. So this, you walked, you walked by, but when I called you I heard five footsteps from behind me. That was weird because it was like Dee -dee -dee -dee. Yeah, we Is there anybody up here with us? I am not kidding you, but there was something walking behind me. It was like three, three, four steps, mm -hmm. really close behind me. It was less steps the second time. Mm -hmm. First, I really thought you were behind me. I had to turn around. 
it, it sounded that loud. And I was like, freaked me out for a minute. It's like, oh, bring it in there. And she did say she had her footsteps up there. Mm -hmm. Let's go see if walk. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. This house is awesome not only for paranormal but the natural woodworking beauty of this house. We had a REM pod go off in the upstairs hall. Lilac preferred fume downstairs and smelled something smoky a few times throughout the house. K2 meter went off under the stairs, most likely a child. Heard some things on the spirit box. Footsteps heard upstairs after the REM pod went off.